Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost and in this episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to be taking a look at everything that you can do to manage and organize your files inside of Lightroom using the folder panel. Now, we've kept the folder panel very simple and yet it's extremely powerful. So we're going to quickly move through some of the more basic features and then progress into the more complicated ones. So right now you can see that I'm looking at the contents of this folder called Jones. What I'd like to do is just create a subfolder. In order to put these images, and I'll go ahead and select them, I want to put these images into the subfolder. So the easiest way to do this is just to click on the plus icon. You can see that I can add a subfolder, or if I wanted to, I could add a folder anywhere, on my internal drive or my external drive, wherever I want to move my images. In this case, we're just going to move them to a subfolder. So I'll go ahead and select that, and we'll call this subfolder Oasis. And the reason that I'm calling it Oasis is because that was the name of the spa that the photo shoot was for. Now, I'm going to include the selected photos because I've already gone to the trouble to select them, and then I'll choose Create. Now, Lightroom has actually moved my files on disk. It's moved them from the Jones folder into the Oasis folder. But you might be thinking, well, that's odd because you can still see them in the Joneses folder. That's because, by default, Lightroom is displaying a flattened view. If I choose Library and then come down to the Include Photos from Subfolders, and I uncheck that or I toggle it off, you can see now that the only thing, the only images that I can see, are those that are within the Joneses folder. If I go down to Oasis, and now we can see that these are all the files that I've actually moved. Now, if I want to see how I've moved these on the hard drive, I can simply right mouse click or control click on the folder and then show in Finder or show in Explorer on Windows. I've actually created this Oasis folder and moved these files on disk. So everything that you do in the folder panel is going to mimic your hard drive. So at all times, you really have control over your images. All right, now let's take a look at some of the other options. When I clicked on that plus icon, not only could I add a subfolder and folder, I can also display the folder name, the path from volume, or the folder and path. So if I choose path from volume, you can see now over here that I get a much longer path. So if I don't know where the files are, that might help me to see it. Personally, I just like the folder name. And then if I need to see the path, I can just position my cursor on top of it and a tooltip will show me the entire path. Or, like we did, I could right mouse click and actually show that folder or show an image in the Finder or in Explorer. Now, if I right mouse click or control click on the actual drive header, I get additional information. Again, I can show it in the Finder, I can get info about it, and I can have it display the disk space the photo count, the status, or just keep it blank and show none. If I show the photo count, it's going to show me the count up here in the drive header. Or we can show the status, which it tells me it's online. Of course, I already know that it's online because you can see over here we have a little green color-coded bar. Not only does that tell me that it's online, because if it was offline, meaning if it was a drive that was disconnected, that would be grayed out. Not only that, the green is indicating that I have a significant amount of free space on the disk. As I start to use more and more space and there becomes less and less free space on the disk, that's actually going to change to a different color. It's going to go to yellow and then to red. All right, let's go ahead and change this back to disk space. We can see this is actually the disk space that I have remaining. All right, now let's move down to the folders and actually right mouse click on a folder. Again, we get the same two options, the Show and Finder and Get Info, but here's where we can also rename a folder. So let me move down to this Card 7 folder. I want to go ahead and rename that. So I'll choose Rename, and then instead of calling this Card 7, I'm going to call this Spa. We'll click Save, and I've renamed that actually on my drive, in this case on my external drive, because that's where Poe is. Now, I happen to know that when I imported these files, some of these are actually in the same folder. And I would actually like to add the parent folder, right? Let's take a look at this on the hard drive. I'll go ahead and show it in Finder, and we can see that this Jones folder and the Cost folder and the Smith folder 
are all inside of a portraits folder. So these are really the parent folders. If in Lightroom I want to see that parent folder, all I need to do is right mouse click on a folder and just choose Add Parent Folder. Now we can see that, sure enough, we can see that the Bell folder and the Russell folder are both in the Weddings folder. Likewise, if I go up here to the Jones folder and say Add Parent Folder, it has now added that Portrait folder. So you can see how it's adding the folder structure up in navigation. If I do it one more time and I say Add Parent Folder, now we can see that both the portraits and the wedding is inside a folder called 2008. So for me, it's a little bit more intuitive to have that information, a little bit more of the folder structure so that I know where my images are on disk. Now, if this was too much, if I didn't want this 2008 folder showing, instead I just wanted the portrait and wedding folders, then I could go ahead and promote the subfolders. Again, I'm just right mouse clicking or control clicking on the Mac to promote the subfolder. So what will happen is the 2008 folder will go away and I'll just be left with the portraits and the wedding folder. So it's very easy to either display or hide as much as you want in the file tree of your folder structure. When I right mouse click, you'll notice that I also have some other options. For example, I can remove a folder. Now, when I select Remove, it's actually going to ask me if I want to promote the subfolders. So in this case, if I'm removing the Portraits folder, do I want to keep the Jones and the Smith folder, or do I want to remove the entire folder? In this case, let's go ahead and promote those subfolders. I can always go back and simply add the Parent folder if I want to get that Portraits folder back. Excellent. Some other options that I have here, I can synchronize a folder so that if I've added more files, maybe I'd quit Lightroom and I'd come back after another shoot and I'd added some files, I can go ahead and synchronize the folder. Lightroom will look at the folder and say, hey, I wasn't aware that there were five more images added, and it will go ahead and ask me if I want to import those files. I could also create a subfolder. This way, this might be a little bit more direct than using the plus icon. I can simply create a folder inside of portraits like this. So as you can see, the folder area in Lightroom mimics the operating system. It's very easy to control your images as well as to control the amount of the file structure that you want to see or that you want to hide, whatever really makes sense to you. The great thing is that the options are all there. All right, well, excellent. That wraps up this episode of The Complete Picture. Thank you for joining me. I'm Julianne Cost, and now you have complete control over your folder structure in Lightroom.